Hi, I'm Rigor. This is your right, and today we are continuing with the path of the Avatar. So, you know the drill. Be sure to like it if you like it, share the video if you think someone else would like it, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe if you want to see more. Last time, we delved into some, uh, some lovely emotions that people might be feeling to each other and their struggles towards that. And, you know, the existential question if, uh, fortune telling is real, and if so, how much faith should you put in it? Those questions will remain unanswered because we are moving on to Beto Bato Bato of the Water Tribe, a <laughs> title that I've seen sitting there in the episode list that I continuously, constantly read as Balto, like, you know, I think that dog movie, so Balto of the Water Tribe it is. No idea what this one's about, but hey, Water Tribe, this could be fun. I literally haven't even read the blurb on the episode. I don't know what it's going to be. The one that came to my head was like a flashback about their dad, maybe? Is that their dad's name? Or something? I don't know. We will see. Or is it just a random water tribe person? I don't know. But anyway, we'll find out. So to do that, I will see you on the other side. Oh my, this was the episode, huh? Oh yeah, this was excellent. Um. All right, let's let's talk about it. Uh, I guess we have to do plot. This one's gonna take a little bit of winding, I guess. Only little criticism, but I understand why we do it. Is this this thing starts like right away? No establishing, no nothing. We're in a forest, and Sokka finds a weapon that is definitely a water tribe weapon. It is a sword made out of a whale's tooth. There, he uses some tracking skills to try and deduce what happened. There was a fight between Fire Nation and uh, the Water Tribe. Uh, they find a boat. Eventually, they find a boat on the shore. It's definitely part of their dad's fleet, but not their dad's boat. At this point, they are later approached by a man who they know called Bato who was in the tribe and a friend of their father. Uh, the uh, man knows them, obviously, and uh, invites them back to an abbey where apparently in a fight he took some heavy wounds. He was left at the abbey to be cared for to catch up later kind of thing. Um, so everyone, their dad and everyone's fine, but they've moved on to uh, the Eastern Earth Kingdom, apparently. So that's where they should be, at least. Uh, this is intercut with a very badass woman uh, attacking... Uh, Zuko's ship looking for a stowaway. Uh, Zuko says no way, but she's riding a great big beast called a Shirshu, and um, he rips open the hull of his boat and finds a stowaway in one of the barrels in uh, his uh, hull, and um, pulls him out, and the thing has a tongue with a paralysis uh, spine on it, paralyzes him, and takes him uh, away. She is presumably a bounty hunter of sorts. Uh, she just marches off, not paying them any mind. So, uh, seeing the value in this, Zuko seeks her out and offers her, well, he, he says, you need to repay me for my ship, which he brushes off completely. But, um, Iroh steps in and just says, we'll pay you tons of gold. Um, pay your weight in gold. And she says, how about your weight in gold? Uh, if you can find, uh, you know, the owner of this necklace, because still got Katara's necklace. She doesn't hold back throwing jabs at them, but she does take them. So, uh, in the Abbey, uh, Aang feels a lot of separation because, uh, Katara and Zaka are connecting with Bato a lot. Um, his room is done up like their room's at home. It has the furs they're used to, the food they're used to, telling old stories of him and their dad. And, um, Aang feels completely left out and doesn't fit in and doesn't know what to do. And uh, he hears how much they want to go see their dad and how there should be a message arriving soon that will tell them where to go, uh, where to meet up with their dad. And Aang takes this as basically they want to leave him. And he leaves before hearing them clarify that they won't, they will stay with Aang. So he's under the impression that they're going to leave. Uh, we also hear the dad's name, uh, Kota, apparently. Uh, so cool, we know that now. Aang goes to brood on the beach and the messenger arrives and he says, I know Bato, takes the map and scrunches it up in anger and he doesn't throw it away, but he just keeps it on his person and, you know, wants to hide it from them. The badass chick with the... Yeah, big thing uh, with uh, Iroh and Zuko on it. Uh, we do a little tour of some people we know. So we see the herbalist woman who we met. We see Aunt Wu, the uh, fortune teller, as they're going through places they've been trying to follow their track. Um, and it will end up at the Abbey soon. But in, before that, we see Aang feeling very guilty about hiding this from them. He clearly feels a lot of guilt about what he's doing as he's moving around the abbey. They talk about a tradition called ice dodging, uh, which in the Water Tribe, when you reach 14, you go out on a boat and you work together as a little team and without uh, the help of the adult and you dodge a boat through bunches of ice and it proves it's, 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 a, it's a rite of passage. And they say they're going to do it here. There's no uh, ice, but there is um, some sheer rocks. So 
uh, it's but it's mostly for soccer, but they all go out, and so they each take a place and t t take a role. And uh, so Bata sits at the front doing, you know, uh, not helping, and it's up to Sokka to direct Aang and Katara on how they do it. And they do exceptionally well dodging through it, and they even do an impossible one where there's no way through, but he directs Aang to bend air a certain way, and for Katara to bend water a certain way, and they make it over the rocks. So they did incredibly well. After this, they are each given a small uh, rite of passage blessing, and uh, they are... Uh, Sokka gets the mark of the, of the wise, Katara gets the mark of the brave, and Aang gets the mark of the trusted, being an honorary member now of the Water Tribe. He feels incredible guilt about this and backs away from it, saying you can't trust him, and he reveals that he had the map. Sokka especially gets incredibly mad right away, marches off and says we're gonna go see dad, like we're done here, and Katara goes with him. Aang is pretty distraught at this, he hates himself, and uh, Bato, Sokka and Katara walk, just take off on foot to go find their dad, and Aang is ready to leave on Appa. And uh, as he's getting ready, he's down by the beach, and in the meantime, the uh, beast has, the beast and the woman and everyone have arrived. And uh, they tear through the abbey. One of the, uh, I'm gonna get, I used to say nuns or priestesses, whatever, of the abbey uh, comes and finds Aang and tells me he has to leave. He takes this as I, everyone wants me to leave. No, no, uh, someone's looking for you. And um, they were following an, a necklace or something. He realizes this is gonna send them off to Katara, so he goes to try and save them. He is too late as uh, Katara, as ba no, Katara and Sokka have decided to go back to the abbey. They turn back, they realize their mistake. Bato says he knows the way, so he'll go on without them, but he leaves them the map and says, if you ever want to catch up to us, here's the map. And that he's sure that their father would understand and that they're doing the right thing. And, you know, especially they're helping the avatar. But then, then they get captured pretty quickly, paralyzed, put on the back of the uh, beast, and they head back to the abbey looking for Aang. Because obviously Zuko doesn't believe they split up. At this point, Aang has got the warning he arrives from the air, and a, and a big fight starts. They do the big fight. Uh, this includes Appa versus the, the beast, the Shirushu, and it, uh, Zuko versus Aang. Uh, Iroh conveniently doesn't get involved, and the uh, badass lady. And um, Katara and Zaka are still paralyzed, so they're slowly recovering off to the side. There is some excellent choreography here. Appa is awesome in this fight, just head bashing and smacking around the other thing and resisting its uh, paralysis uh, venom. Like it does clearly affect him, but it takes more than one. He's slowly slowing down, which is really cool to see. And uh, anyway, it ends up that uh, Aang manages to steal the necklace back and uh, Sarko is again wise, incredibly smart. He realizes that the beast sees with its nose. So the Abbey uh, makes perfumes. That's what they do. That's how they, you know, sustain themselves. So they get big jars of perfume, push them over, and then have Katara water bend them and flood its senses. So it freaks out and goes crazy and runs off. And then um, it, it it conveniently paralyzes Zuko and the badass lady, and uh, the gang fly away. So you know that's where we're left at. Uh, that's the plot. Uh, it took a while to get through it, because we'll did put some turns here. Let's talk about it. First off, this lady is awesome, and I want to see her again. She, um, I know that she, she has a whip, but the, the step on me energy is huge here. But aside from that, no, her um, design is great. I love someone who gives people like Zuko, uh, you know, that much um, edge. And, you know, her design's got, like, the skull on her head, like, the skull headband thing. And, ah, uh, she looks great. Um, and the tattoos. She looks really cool, so I hope she comes back. Like, I want her to be a regular character. Let's, let's, like, it might be bad for our heroes, but let's get her on board. She's great. Yeah, just the design. Uh, there's lots of characters like this in different animes, but she definitely just has that great all black, um, you know, design, especially in a character, in a show like this, where, you know, usually everyone has, you know, one of the four sort of, um, element colors, so she really stands out. Uh, I also wrote down that, um, is Appa gonna have to stomp a bitch? Because he nearly did. He nearly flattened her. He would have killed her. And he, Appa was so cool in this fight. He even used his tail to make like a almost an airbending gust. It was so cool. Um, I love seeing him get involved. Uh, he, you know, he actually is scary. What else? Oh, we saw, we get a few other things that I don't remember if we've seen exactly like, um, we get information it's been two years since they saw their dad. Uh, my only other, my only criticisms of this episode are that it's it starts so quick, like you don't have any time to establish where they are. They're just in a forest and find a thing, and then on Zuko's ship, they're just on the ship, and suddenly the lady's there, and like it's just there's like no establishing anything. But that's okay because you get past it pretty quick. And the other thing I'll say is um, little Sokka's voice, like kid Sokka, his voice is bad. It's not good. It doesn't sound good. I don't know if it's that actor trying to make his voice younger or if it's a, a different actor, but either way, it just doesn't work for me. But you know, is what it is. Not a um. 
uh, not a huge deal. The pace of this whole episode is breakneck. They got so much to get through. Um, I like that Bato didn't end up being a bad guy or a traitor or something. It was just like a nice touch in with uh, the family, with the tribe. And you get, uh, you know, uh, the idea that they had now, they now have a way to their dad. And they're definitely going to go to the North Pole first. You know, they have some really serious things to do first. But um, we, I think, I, I forget the pattern, guys. I really do. But is it Earth after water? Because if we do water now, and they do Earth next. Maybe they go to the Earth Kingdom looking for their dad and to do Earth Bending at the same time. That would be a good way to do it. Also, the guilt eating up at Aang was a um, quite a uh, thing to see. You know, like, it, you could definitely see with his, again, his expression, his body movements. And he definitely felt it immediately, you know. It wasn't just, uh, wasn't just uh, like, a little twinge thing. It was really getting to him very quickly. Uh, I wrote down, it's like, hey, the old lady showed up again. Like, I was wondering if she would. And, you know, same for Aunt Wu. Um, I also have in here... I wrote you cheeky old man because they do the joke where oh no I, I, I'm falling down and the, the paralyzed uh, woman falls on him and uncle I didn't see you get hit Shh. like okay all right you know I'll let you get away with one it's whatever it's yeah it's all right um but yeah so great designs the design on the beast the sheer shoe that I just, they said it once and she said it in passing so that's what I got they uh the, that thing's cool. Love its design. It's like a um, like a mole design on the front, uh, with you know obviously the crazy sensors tearing around through it was cool. Someone giving that much test. Zuko was cool. Um, the two the beast fighting was cool because I was wondering how they were gonna do it right because I didn't think you'd have you know like human characters like just killing an animal or something like even though they talk about it a lot like here's a this thing's made from a whale tooth etc like they don't really talk about killing stuff much and even Aang shows because of his monk stuff you know he doesn't eat meat and he's also like oh yeah nothing better than the fur of a dead animal when they talk about the water tribe furs but again like you see dead animals but it's like it's all already done and I don't think you're gonna see them like murder an animal on screen and there's only like one aggressive mood made towards an animal like in violence because the the badass lady whips the the thing to order it around which is not great but she only actually whips like Arpa once to try and hurt him and the only uh, actual damage that either of them take is from each other and they defeat the other one by flooding its senses not like you know stabbing it or something but the 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 fight between Zuko and Aang was pretty excellent choreography is off the chain a bit where they're dancing around on the um they're dancing around and trading blows and dodging blows on top of a well really excellent stuff and smashing through rooftops the destruction was big. I feel sorry for the Abbey. They're gonna have to repair so much, but um, it is best that they leave. <laughs> but um, yeah, this was an excellent episode. This one, uh, this one was really cool. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I loved it. The choreography was great. The animation was great. The story was fun. The check-in with people from the Water Tribe was great. Um, this side, this random character who turned up is awesome, and I want to see more of her. The beast design is cool. Seeing the beast fight was great. Reaffirmation of their uh, future is great, and what they want to do, and uh, possibly a link to their father in the future. Oh, and sweetly at the end, Aang returns uh, Katara's necklace and he goes, "Oh, Zuko said to get it back to you," and she goes, "Oh, how massive Zuko! Be sure to give him a kiss for me." He goes, "I will," and she leans in. She leans in and gives Aang a nice kiss on the cheek, and he gets all the blood and it's very nice so lovely note to end on so yeah i think that's everything uh which is a lot but i really enjoyed this one uh but that's all for now so until next time remember the path of the avatar is a hard one but if you're getting chased by a lady like that it's not all bad anyway till next time my name is rigo hope you have a wonderful day and i hope i did all right <laughs>